So, how do we do permaculture? Well, there's quite a lot involved here, so I'm going to make a whole series of videos that looks at the design process. But just to give you a bit of an overview, we want to start with what are our needs. So, where are our vulnerabilities, essentially? What do our supply lines look like? So where does our energy come from, our water, our food? What would happen if something happened to those supply lines? How much resilience do you have? And then thinking about the context in which you're based. So where are you in the human landscape? But also thinking about what's your local climate like? What's the nature? Where is the, you know, what's the soil like? Your rainfall and all kinds of things. So we're studying essentially everything that's going on around us in order to understand where we are that then allows us to get to a point where we can start choosing some techniques and elements, things that could help us meet our needs in our given context. So that means we need to understand a bit about lots of different techniques and strategies and elements, <laughs> uh, things like compost toilets and raised beds and all these kind of things, in order to know where they work well and also where they wouldn't, because we don't want to choose something on the basis that we've seen somebody else use it, because they may have different problems to us. They're solving different problems and they're in a different context. What works for them won't necessarily work for you. So your, your permaculture will be unique to you because you'll have specific needs, which may be quite similar to lots of other humans, but you'll have specific needs and you'll be trying to meet them as best you can in a particular place. So you, that's why you can't look at a site and say that's permaculture because permaculture looks different in different places. And in order to really understand where we are, we need to observe for a, a good amount of time. So it's generally assumed that it's wise in permaculture to observe for a year a site because then you see everything that's going on in the seasonal cycle which might be to do with plants in the landscape or animals coming and going, um, the needs, what's going on with the climate, how do your needs change through the year. In particular, we need to understand what are the key limits that we're facing and what resources do we have. And by identifying those limits, then we can look at ways of overcoming them. Um, and that brings us back again to our sort of strategies and techniques that we might use in our given context. Once we've decided what's going to help us meet our needs in our context, then we need to take those things and assemble them into effective systems, things that are as best as possible going to look after themselves. And in order to do that, we need to understand a lot more about the things that perhaps we don't necessarily give attention to, like water and soil and these kind of things. And so in permaculture we tend to spend a lot of time learning about those things as well because they help us to meet our di needs directly. So we would call these uh, supporting functions. So if I'm wanting to grow more food to have better food security then how do I look after the plants that I'm trying to grow? Then perhaps they need some protection from the wind or the sun depending on the plants and the evaporation or maybe there's a need for more irrigation, or I need to improve the quality of the soil, its fertility or its water holding capacity or, or whatever. So while we set out to meet our needs in the landscape, we also need to be thinking about how do we look after the landscape that's looking after us. Okay, so where can we do permaculture? That's the last video.